estoy con una estrella de tamaño internacional y por el, la estrella con la que estoy hablando, por el invitado que tengo ahora, va a ser en inglés esta entrevista, ustedes disculparán, pero podrán ver subtítulos abajo. Mr. A. Lang, Hello. Very, very, a pleasure to talk to you. Hola, pleasure is mine. Uh, oh, Mr. A. Lang, for those of you who don't know, is a game designer of a lot of famous games, like, I don't know, have you heard of Blood Rage, uh, Rising Sun, Hank? Those are some of the recent games that have been an enormous success. Of course, you have a long trajectory in, in games. I didn't know before, I haven't checked. Uh, for example, the Star Wars LCG, yep. uh, Warhammer Invasion, uh, Warhammer Conquest, those games are also yours. Yep. The games mas the Dice uh, Masters, Dice Masters, yep. Masters, those games are a lot of fun, I had them a lot of, uh, a lot of time before. And my channel, but my public, are mainly about uh, miniature wargaming, Warhammer 40,000, right. things like that. So, uh, your work, mainly in games like uh, Blood Race and such, it's having a lot of impact in the miniature painting community because sure. we love the miniature. No? Right, well, yeah, it's like, like no assembly miniatures of that no quality, assembly. right? That's yeah. a, for some people, that's a, that's a plus because yep. they save a lot of time. Yeah. For some others, more they want, they want They want to pose it. They and want the hobby and they want to be right. bash and so on. That's but right. I like to have miniatures. I like both, no? But sure. just have some miniatures already made. It's advantage but anyway uh, miniatures are a, a, a mo most important component in your games lately what's your uh, point of view on using miniatures on games not using well, tokens or something like that well so two things uh, number one uh, I like toys toys are cool um, I'm very visual and I'm very haptic so um, it's important to me in a game that is supposed to be epic and tell a big story I want to see it rise 3D from the table, right? The other part is a game design reason. Um, I like miniatures that tell not only tell a story, but they also give you an idea of gameplay. So if I see like, you know, two little warriors and a giant sea serpent, I look at the sea serpent and I go, oh, this has to go in the water. That makes sense. And I don't have to read any rules. That does a lot of work for you as a designer as well. Uh, so I'm a very big fan of that. Yeah, miniatures are your thing. You you like your, your games with miniatures? Yeah, not all games, but most, but the big epic ones for sure. Yes. Do you think there's been a tendency right now to make miniatures games, or to make collections of miniatures more than the game itself? Uh, I don't know. It depends. I mean, it's it's easy. <clears throat> there are two different skill sets, right? So it's it's easy to get uh, to get hypnotized by like all these really cool toys and then go oh shit i need a game <laughs> um but i think mostly now like the, the the market is so crowded and the standards of the community are so high i don't think you can get away with like making a game that isn't good that does that has minis i think the, the i think the public is too smart for that now yeah and things like 3d printing and, and so right. i guess that also that's right i mean i don't going to buy a game a good game. Uh, right. Well, I have a printer in my house and I can print off minis. No? Right, and there's lots of games with good minis. So, yeah. And so, there's going to be a balance between the game and the miniature design. Yep, they both have to be excellent. Yeah, okay, that's, I think that's a, a really good point. Also, do you play war games? I, I seen an interview uh, before, uh -huh. and you play or play it Warhammer, right? I did, well, for a very short time. Uh, I actually had a lot of trouble with it. Uh, I, I, I have trouble with games where the rules are not in front of me. So games like a lot of board games, the rules are in the book, right? And um, I don't have a very, I have a very short attention span. I like to see the rules in front of me very like this. Um, so uh, it was never my, uh, my native language, but uh, I do appreciate that in war games, especially like Warhammer, you can look at the mini and have a pretty good idea of its abilities. I, that, I learned that from Warhammer. Uh, that's something I take with me today. Okay. I, I ask this because recently here in, in the Mexico City community, there's been a rise in the game of A Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, okay, cool. I know it's a game that it's not new. It has a lot of years. years. Yeah. But 
in the last, I don't know, two months, some people began playing. Okay. Some people say, hey, let's play Song of Ice and Fire. Game of Thrones for those. Easier, right? Right. And then say, look, this is a Game of, Ice, uh, Game of Thrones. And say, look, and then begin. And now there are like 30 people playing. Wow. Out of the blue. Cool. So I, I fall also. The, my mother gave me the, the starter box for my birthday. And I played a couple of weeks ago. And I find the game very, very fun. Right. I, I love that, and I think it's what you say, the, the rules are in front of you. The rules aren't exactly right. I think that with uh, Song of Ice and Fire, you give us all the fun in the war game and taking out the homework. Yeah, well, so... What's your approach with that game? Exactly right. So, so in my opinion, so it's not, we don't like to make it, <clears throat> I don't like to make games that are too much simulation, right? Because simulation equals homework. So... Uh, and the thing about Song of Ice and Fire, I come from a board game background, as well as my co-designer, Michael Chanel. So we want to make a game that would appeal to people who don't necessarily have a long history with war games, that just want to come in out of the blue and play a game where, like, like for example, like if you, want to, if you want to make a morale check or something, right? I don't need to look at the rules for all the modifiers. If a modifier applies, it'll be on the card. Otherwise, you don't have to know it. That's that's what I like about that game, and I think that's a I think that resonates with people who just want to pick up and play. But the key to that is the depth is still there. You want to make you don't want a shallow game. You want a game that has a lot of replayability and a lot of depth and discoverability. But we want that depth to be in the strategy, not in reading the book. Yeah, that that's what I really like about the game. You have everything with you. It's very simple. It's very easy to learn, but. It's, it has a lot of complexity and the players are all over, players from Warhammer 40,000, Warhammer Fantasy, those are heavy players, you know those. Right. And the game has that kind of PCG. Right. The, the ranking units, I, I never played Warhammer Fantasy because I was a little afraid of it, that or not of me. It's intimidating, so, yeah. It's intimidating. I, I, I don't want to have that much media turn on. Right. And here it's very accessible right and also i think one thing i really love is that all the armies are in different colors right right that that was that was a risky decision because i know that like the purest war gamers they want a very like, the base code has to be consistent but we assumed that only a small percentage of people who play the game will paint it so they have to be different colors it has to be instantly playable so we took the risk. We know that some people will say, nah, not for me. And that's okay. There's lots of, there's lots of games for the purists. Yeah, but those games, the, the minis of Song of Sapphire are very beautiful. Oh, yeah. Really well sculpted. And I have friends who paint them, and they have a lot of, uh, an incredible job. The horses are incredible. But Atheo needs a, a house that is having a lot of uh, fans here. But if you don't have time, if you just bought the game and want to play, it's easy to know. I'm the red ones, I'm the gray ones. That's, that's right. That's how, no? That's right. So I think that's a key decision. I really love that. And I think that for people, it's very easy to get into wargaming with that kind of game. The that, game is still in developing. Yeah, oh yeah. This, um, I think we're on year we're on year four. So, we're, um, so I'm not as involved in the development anymore. Um, I was mostly involved with Michael on the core system the first two years worth of stuff. Okay. Um, but I know what the roadmap looks like, and there's there's so much stuff that could come out like for years and years and years. Okay. Um, but I I don't even know anymore, so it's gonna it's a surprise to me okay. now because I've been away for about a year and a half. Okay, that's interesting. So it's a surprise to me now. now ya, ya oyeron los que están jugando Game of Thrones, vienen cosas, vienen cosas. Uh, do you know if there is a competitive scene about the game? Oh Don't yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, we have a um, we have pretty strong organized play for it at, uh, at Cima, for sure. Okay, yeah, because here in Mexico we don't we don't have a very strong distribution, so we don't know very much of that. Right. But it's interesting to know, so we can make our own tournaments and touch. No? I think. So. Oh yeah, they have very good support for organized play if you uh, at the Simon website for sure. Okay. Okay. So I I will find out. Uh, well, Mr. Lang, it's really a pleasure. How are you? Uh, sorry, 
Um, how's been your time in Mexico? Are you having fun? Have you, have you seen about Mexico Mexico is delicious. <laughs> That's I, right. I, the food here is so amazing. It's um, so amazing. How, how do you think about Vega? How do you like it so far? Uh, very good. I mean, I've been here at this booth most of the time, <laughs> uh, so I haven't seen... I took one walk around. It reminds me very much of the conventions back home in the U.S. and Canada. Like the same size of hall, the, same, the way the dealers look. It's very similar. I, like, if I didn't know I was in Mexico, I could say this is almost anywhere. And it's very good, high standard. I like it a lot. Um, but the fact that it's in, in Mexico it also has that Latin flavor, which I really like. <laughs> well, thank you very much and keep doing your stay. Oh, my pleasure. It's been a pleasure.